Hi, welcome to the first edition of the Viking Success Series. Today we have with us Edgar Omar Soto, who is a former graduate student from Mountain View High School and a former student of mine. I'm Mr. Hector Torres, faculty member. Edgar, thank you for coming to visit us today. Edgar, what are you doing these days? So pretty much what I'm doing right now is just going to me in my undergrad, studying Spanish and linguistics and uh, Italian studies. That's pretty much what I'm doing today. Great. Um, what is a typical day for you going to college and, and working and doing all those things? It is uh, it is difficult. I mean, I woke up over there at 5.30 because I have to be in the Monte, Monte Station by 6.37 because I have, I have to uh, I commute all the way to UCLA. So it's like a two-hour commute in the morning. Um, uh, in, the, in the morning, it's, it's kind of easy because my, my dad takes me to Monte Station, so it takes me like around an hour. But in the afternoon, I have to come back on my own, all the way to my house. It takes around three hours. So in reality, I spend more time in commuting than in, in school. But I guess it's a sacrifice I have to do you know, to be successful, and that's that's what I want to do. Um, but I mean, I am enjoying it. I mean, it's 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 hard to commute to be all this time, all, all these hours in the bus. But um, I think I'm learning a lot uh, through that. So. That's kind of what my typical day is. I mean, I, I rest is that Thursdays and, and Sundays, but uh, I use them to pretty much do homework and catch up on my readings. What is it like to go to college, to go to UCLA, and being uh, with UCLA students, being in UCLA classrooms, listening to professors? It is. It is. It is different. You know. I mean. I've been. I've been. I've been. I've been I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been in the United States. in you know, high school, community college, and uh, for your university. So it's. It's different. I mean, every every everything is different. I remember when I was in high school. You know, I was many students were like just goofing around and not really paying attention to classes. Community college things change a little bit, but things are kind of the same as the students messing around. But in UCLA, everybody goes, uh, or what I've seen so far, everybody goes um, just to, to what they have to do. They go, they sit down, they're ready to to work, they're ready to with the, with their homework, they're ready with everything. So it. it just, just, just to get into the classroom and, and see all the students, just really prepared. Uh, it just, it just motivates me even more to, be, to prepare myself. So it's a totally different environment. Um, I love it. It's, it's great to be with those students that, that, that they, they really, they now, they now know what they want to do. So, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. So, and I would like to encourage, I mean, all the students, especially um, in my community, Latino students, actually. Study uh, and uh, fight for it, and, and make it to for your university, and study, get their uh, undergrad, get the grad, even a PhD, or not. So, because that's that's what we that's what we're here for. What was it like to go to school at Mountain View High School? It was a good experience. I mean, I got to know some uh, some great instructors, some great uh, teachers, such as, such as yourself, Professor uh, Hector Torres, such as uh, I think she's not working here anymore, Professor uh, Witterholt. She used to teach math. She was great. She helped me out with my SATs and my ACTs. My other instructor that I don't think she's here is Tierney, Mr. Tierney. She also helped me out a lot in my Spanish classes. I got to know Mr. Sunyiga and Mr. Sunyiga. They were both great. Um, I, 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 got to, I got to meet some friends that up to this day I just talked to. Uh, a couple of them went to UC Santa Barbara. They're, um, they already graduated, so I'm really glad for them. Um, uh, the classes here were good. I mean, I, I I learned a lot in my classes. When I was here, where I actually learned to speak English in this school. So uh, thanks to the ELD classes and, and all those things, the, the, the transition courses were great. Uh, and I don't know why this happened when in my freshman year here. I had I had I had been here in the, in the country for like six months, but strangely enough, they gave me uh, English classes and I really bilingual classes. Uh, at the beginning, I really didn't like that because uh, some of my other friends, they were, they were in ELD and in the transition classes, they were actually given um, uh, bilingual courses, but, uh, but 
But then at the end of the year, I actually I was thankful for that because I mean I learned English faster and I and, and, and my transition to that regular English courses was much easier. Um, so being here was great. I mean uh, I'm thankful and. If I had to do it again, I would actually come back to this school and study in high school. Yeah. How did you avoid making choices that would drive you away from your academic goals? What inspired you? When I was in Mexico before coming to the United States, uh, people don't believe me these days, probably because I'm actually doing good on myself. But I used to be a bad kid. When I was in Mexico, I used to be a delinquent. I used to be a I used to steal stuff. I used to uh, vandalize uh, private property and whatnot. So, but when my parents decided to bring me to the United States, when they make that big decision to, to come to the United States with practically nothing, um, and, I, and, I, and I came to this country, it made me realize all the sacrifices they were doing. Um, it made me realize that they were leaving everything behind, and especially my mom. She was, she was leaving her parents, you know. And and it's it's interesting, not interesting. It's it is hard to, for me to, to see my mom uh, uh, and to realize and uh, that she's not gonna see her friends alive again because due to our immigration situation, we can we can really, we can go back to the United to Mexico. So and just realizing that my mom made that big sacrifice for me and for my peers, I mean my my uh, siblings, um, it just made me realize that uh, that I'm here because because they want me, they want me to have a better life. So it was when I made that realization that I that I, that I decided that I was gonna do, go to community, go to go to a university, uh, be the best I can be, and that's when my 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 life changed around. I mean, I like I decided that I, it was because of them. Everything that I, that I, that I was gonna do from that point on, it was because of them. So my high school, when I graduated from high school, it was for them. I mean, the, the, my diploma has my name, but it should it should have had theirs. My, when I graduated from community college, same thing. In community college, I got a, a prestigious award, and I think it should have been their name there, not mine. Uh, and now that I'm community, and, I'm, I'm, and now that I'm in UCLA, it's everything because of them. So, in, they both have been my inspiration to keep going, to keep fighting, to not make the wrong decisions. So, parents, and not only mine, but parents in the community, like Latino community in general, are like our backbone. So our all students. I mean, without them, I think we have would have a hard hard time. But uh, yeah, parents. My parents have inspired me to keep going and never give up. What was it like to be a teenager here in El Monte, uh, growing up here in El Monte? What was your toughest obstacle to overcome? Uh, it was. Uh, it was. It was it was it was tough. I mean, as a teenager, I mean, doesn't matter where you live, it's gonna be tough. Um, I mean, those years are really hard for everybody. But living here in Monte, um, it wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, the city has this bad reputation and, and whatnot. But I didn't see. I didn't, I didn't think it was that bad. The reputation. I think it's just the reputation with the city have. But it's not. It's not a city. It's a bad city. I think it's a good city. I mean, like everywhere in the United States or everywhere in the world, it has its bad parts. But I mean. I mean, what doesn't you know? So, yeah, living here was it was great. I mean, currently I moved out of Monte because of the you know, economic situations. But I mean, I, I like it here. I like El Monte. It's it's a good city to live in, I guess. Um, uh, yeah. What was the question? What was the part of the question? Uh, was there a tough obstacle to overcome, or was it just uh, the English barrier at the beginning? It's just language. Um, I, I mean, I had to learn the language and I had to learn it quick because, I mean, if I wanted to do something, especially academically speaking, I had to, I had to learn the language as fast as I could. So the language barrier, I mean, you could say, you know, bad influences as just as people, but, I mean, people, I mean, that kind of people can't really do much if you don't let them. So I would, I would, I would argue that in, in certain cases, that's just, that may maybe just be an excuse. In some other cases, it would actually, it makes more sense, but in my case, like, my influences were not a problem. Can you think of some valuable lessons that uh, you learned socially or personally here at Mountain View High School? Study. I mean, it was always, uh, my instructors already mentioned, they were always pushing me to study, to, uh, to do my best. Um, I think every, I, I was lucky enough to have good instructors. So every instructor was always like pushing me to do better, pushing me to, to do my best. 
So my valuable lesson will be will be meeting them, meeting friends here, you know, meeting meeting the right people, and and having and having a great time in high school because really that's why that's what high school is all about, you know, get, getting educated, getting education, but also having a good time. So I enjoy my time here. Um, I learned friendship. Friendship is really important. Uh, I learned it through through my classes, but I think more importantly, I learned through playing soccer. I mean, it was I made some great friends there. Um, so I was to say friendship is one thing I really learned. Uh, to value school, to value education, that's another thing I really learned here. So because I mean everything starts from zero, and everything starts from 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 from, from like ground. So you have to build you build the blocks start here in high school. I don't think not even in, in uh, middle school, so we're here. So and, and here was really really important for me to just move up and you know study and do something with my life. That's what I'm doing right now. What are some valuable lessons you learned as a student at Mount Sac or at UCLA? Help, help the community. It was it was really good. I mean, because when I graduated from high school, I didn't have. Um, Anybody would help me, especially with my uh, legal status. I'm a document student, so I made really big mistakes when it came to apply universities, when it came to like in the, in the application, when it comes to give you social security number, I was wrongly advised. Um, so one thing that I learned in community college that was great was uh, was uh, helping others that are in, the, that, that are in your situation. Uh, I, I saw a lot of students struggling in community college because they didn't know about some of the resources that we have, that we understand the community students have, such as the AB540 and now currently the DREAM Act. So even though the uh, AB540 law was signed into law in 2002, many people to these days don't know what is it. So they were struggling. So I think the most important value I learned in, in community college was to help to help others in the same, in, in the same situation. Uh, and I, and I, and I, and I did that. And to this day, I'm trying to do the same. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to uh, uh, let them know about the resources we have as undocumented students, and that uh, we can. You know, everything is possible, and I don't let anybody tell you that you can't. Uh, and and that's what I'm trying to do here. That's the one reason I came to to, the, to, my, to my high school to kind of tell students, I help them out uh, to to reach uh, higher education. So community college taught me that valuable lesson help in the community, give something back to it, because that's where I came from. Hi. Welcome to the first edition of the Viking Success Series. Tell me about the resources that are available to undocumented students. Now we have a lot of resources. There's, I mean, a lot. With the uh, passing of the AB 130, which is half of the Dream Act, undocumented students such as myself were able to apply to private scholarships throughout the state. Um, and with the one, AB 131, which is the second part of Dream Act, we were able to, to receive financial aid, such as the Border Governors Free Waiver. Free waiver in a uh, community college and um, and financial aid in, in the for university which is Cal Grand B. Um, so that's one of that's that's I think the main resource we have as as like students. But um, in Pembroke, for example in in Mansac we have a, a great person and we have a great group. Uh, the advice of that group is uh, Elmer Rodriguez and the group is Ideas. Uh, the group focuses a lot of help, on helping people, focuses a lot on um, of, uh, giving you some of those resources, helping you actually fill out uh, your university applications. Uh, Mansa has a program, uh, scholarship program every year, and they don't, and they don't require a security number for you to apply. 
so you can just apply. So there's and people don't know that, and that's one of the biggest things we have in Mansac is is that that scholarship program that gives around I think over a million dollars every year in scholarships. So the money is there. Just uh, for instance, just last semester, a few of my friends got a got a couple thousand dollars in scholarship, and they're undocumented. So the the money and the resources are there. It's just a matter of talking to the right people. Um, so in months like that, I'll be um, What else do we have? So as the resources, that's that's like the biggest thing we have. Um, but we have to know how to fill things because I mean it's hard to fill out the application sometimes, especially for DreamAct because DreamAct it, it's similar. It's actually yeah, it's like that. It's like the FAFSA. So it's it's the same thing. It's the same form, it, um, but it's uh, but it's 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 for Dream Act. So uh, so it's important to teach students to 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 to, uh, to how to fill it because many of them don't know. Many many of them don't even know how to get it or where to get it. <coughs> and and one of the biggest challenge we face as as an document student when it comes to filling the application, it's the fear that we're gonna get deported or the feel that the fear, uh, the fear that we, our parents are gonna get deported. But uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, with not, I already filled it twice. Uh, it has helped me out a lot economically. I mean, I filled it last year for my last semester of community college, and my class will pay for it. I only had to pay like twenty-five dollars plus books, so it was really cheap as 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 compared to the other years, which I had to pay for all the classes plus um plus books. So that's that's a great idea. That the, the California Dream Act application. It's a, it's a great deal that we have to teach students how to fill out, and that's one of the reasons I'm here. Um, so going back to another thing, um, what the AB540 does, the AB540 lab, which is um, it's called a, it's, it's AB540 uh, Assembly Bill 540. So it, it helps or it gives uh, document students opportunity to um, to attend uh, community colleges, uh, private universities. And, um, and public universities as, as a resident of the state, so they don't have to pay out state tuition. That was when, when it was uh, passed in 2002. So there, you know, when you to do that, to, to kind of qualify to that, you have to fulfill some requirements, such as you know being in um, completed at least three years of high school. So if uh, if you start here as, uh, as a junior, chances are you may not qualify. So you, people have to know that too. So, but if people started here as a uh, sophomore or freshman, then they, they qualify for the AB540 because they're, they're in the considered residence of the state. So, when they go to uh, community college or free university, they don't have to uh, they don't have to pay as out of state, but they have to do it. Uh, it's a form. It's called affidavit. So that, that form pretty much states that you will, you as a student, uh, as soon as you're eligible for residency or citizenship or any of any of any, any of those. You will uh, fill out your paper and your paperwork with immigration, and you will let the school know about it. So that's pretty much what it's kind of a contract, it's telling, it's telling the, 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 the community college, the university, that you will do that as soon as you're eligible. So but it's kind of tricky. So they have to know how to fill it out too, and so that's why like groups such as ideas or people such as myself or some other friends that I have are trying to help out students to fill it out because it, it may seem simple, but it, the second question especially is kind of tricky. So. That's one of the applications we have to run in. As we said, as we were saying, Dream Act is it's it's not it's it's not self explanatory either. I mean, it's, it has some parts that are complicated, but I mean, we're here to help. Um, what else can I talk about? Um, well, currently, I mean, currently we have uh, it's this is I think this is a great resource too. But many people are not taking advantage of it either because of economic uh, economic problems or a lack of information, and that's the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals DACA. Uh, I think about a million, a little bit more than a million uh, people, students qualify for it. But currently, I think only thirty thousand have applied for it. And um, and I think you know, the big part is it's it's the same thing as when people don't apply or quit, wouldn't would have a to apply to Dream Act is because they think they're gonna get deported and and and, and they're gonna you know their family is gonna suffer, um, which is which is a reasonable fear. You know, it has has happened with with. Uh, Laws or I call them pseudo laws because I think they're lies, such as the uh, security communities imp implemented by Napolitano. They they haven't done anything but to separate families. 
but uh, the fair action, it, it is actually, um, I, I think it's good. It's a good tool to help to use. I mean, you get a poor permit and you can do some, you, you can finally work I and mean, legally work. So, but to fill that out, that's even trickier than the other two. So that's, that's harder. Because they ask you for more requirements. You have, they, I mean, they do a background check, so you get, they, they get your, uh, your fingerprints. So, but uh, but there's no there's I don't think there's there's any risk or there's n uh, in in doing that because in reality you're doing it yourself. I mean you're not really you're not you're not including your parents. Your parents are not part of the application. It's only you. So and and if it comes and and, and if the problem is fear, I mean I totally understand it, but that's what we're here for. You know we're here to support you. We're here to help you. I mean, it's not just me. I mean, I tell you, I have a, a lot of other friends that are actually doing the same things as I am, uh, helping the students. So, and um, the other reason as to why people don't think they're feeling it is because of the economic, I mean, economic situation. It's, it's tough, and you have to pay around $465 uh, for the work permit and the application, so it's, it, it's hard. But I mean, um, we, we can always do something, you know, like do fundraisers, uh, and and raise the money for the for the diffraction. As a matter of fact, one of my friends in community college in, in, in Mansac, she did a fundraiser, and she got the money for her, for for her diffraction. So Elmer Rodriguez, the advisor from from uh, uh, Ideas in uh, in uh, Mansac, he tells us that if if we can if we have the money to do parties and whatnot. Then what we, we I think we could we kind of have some little money to make a fun, to come to make to make like a fundraise party, and then I agree because I mean we as Latinos always have something to do we have us have a party you know we always and like for example when it comes to quinceañeras and whatnot or birthdays we get I mean we do the party regardless of whether good good economically or not we still do it so I mean if we can do it for that reason why not do it for something important such as the uh, I'm I mean not saying that birthdays of quinceañeras are not important. I mean, because that's really important uh, as, as a community. But I mean, we can also do it for this reason. I mean, why not? You know, or do car washes. During during summer, a, a couple of friends and I, uh, actually a few friends and I, got together and we created a group, uh, on documented for higher educa documented for, documented students for higher education, and we did that. We ra we raised some money, doing car washes, uh, doing uh, jar sales. So. I think you, you can do anything, you know, and, and, the, and the clothes, we, we got them donated, so we really had to spend money on that. So the, the money we got was just for our group. So, and um, for the two, two of us are in UCLA, and one of the girls is in Casa LA, and the other guy is in UCI. So, and, and all of us were all documented. So, I mean, we have to do, we, we, have, to, we have to struggle. But I mean, if we, want, if we really want it, we have to do other little things and and uh, and like doing all the selling stuff or doing some house parties and whatnot. It's it's one of the, it's one of the things we can do. Car washes are great. I mean, we were there a few hours. Yeah, so um, UCI. And yeah, we're doing uh, the uh, uh, the group and uh, documented students for higher education. It was four of us and two of us were going to UCLA. One of them, what, the girls went to Castella, and uh, the other guy is with UCI. Um, and uh, the last, I was going to talk about uh, the application process for universities. Uh, there are well, there are two kinds of universities, private, private and public actually too. Uh, but three, like I would say, three different systems. We have the classic system, we have the private system, and the UC system. Uh, classic system, um, when it comes to independent students. As far as I know, it's I mean they, they it's hard to get a fee waiver for the applications. You can do it, but it's kind of a long process. So you 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 would have to pay fifty five dollars for every university you apply. Uh, private you have to pay as well. I think they have a fee waiver system. And and the UC system actually gives you a fee waiver for, for universities, regardless of your or your, or your of uh, the, uh, status legal status. So if you want to pay, you want to pay for five universities, then you have to pay, I think, seven dollars for every university you apply after four. So and so that's up to you. So you only want to, if you only want to apply to four, so you choose wisely, or you choose up to choose up your top four, and, and go with it. Uh, 
So going back to the University of Telecommunications, classes don't require you to lose your classes, so lose your major. They don't require you. They don't require an essay, personal statement. So theoretically, it's easier because then you just have to put classes and personal information. Um, privates and UCs they will require you an, an essay, a personal statement. Uh, the UC person statement is a thousand words. It's divided into prompts. And the first prompt pretty much asks you about your past, asks you about your personal uh, life and personal struggles. So, and as I always say, we'll have a story to tell. So, uh, there's no right or wrong answer in the personal statement because that's personal. And I know academically we always start to, to, to use third person when we're writing as academic essays. But when it comes to uh, personal statements, we have to use the I statement all the time because it, it's about us. It's like an autobiography. So that's something um, that I would like to that I would like to help students with as well. You know, writing the personal statements because I, mean, I, I can't really tell them what to write, but I can help them with the grammar because I don't know their, I don't know their story because they only they only they only know it themselves. So and as I said, there's no right or wrong. So you just just, just be yourself and write your your personal your personal experiences. Um, private universities have something similar, and I'm not really familiar with it because I didn't apply any any privates. But they also require you write a personal statement in which you you have to describe personal struggles and, and stuff. So that the the the, the writing part in in um, in, um, in a personal in a private universities is similar to UCs. So of course when it comes to to money, uh, the costed universities are, are cheaper um, than um, the UC system. It's, it's kind of in the middle. And of course, privates are really expensive. They're the most expensive. Um, so, but now with Dream Act, uh, you, you, get, you, get, you, get, you get it uh, paid for, at least, at least in the, the UC system. I'm not really sure how that's working in Costate, but I think it's working. It, you get the call grant. The call grant. And it's not covering the entire, the entire tuition, it's covering most of it. And I know that in, that in the UC system it's covering it all because I got it covered through the Duma. Sorry. And um, so, uh, yeah, so in the UC uh, and in the community college, when you apply, when the student applies, and when it comes to the social security part, the, the, there are two options a student if, if that, has, that does not have a social security can choose. Either you leave it blank or you put zeros. So guys, when you apply that, that's pretty much the, the most tricky part. You put what to put and just the number. So it's that. Just leave it blank and put zeros. And that, that's actually, I, I put zeros when I applied to UC, to the UCs, so it worked. So, because when you immediately, when you put zeros, they immediately know you, you either decline the state or you're, or you're an a for the student. And they let you know right away. So they send you emails and they let you know right away. Whether if you're if you're a uh, undocumented student, they require you to send paperwork such as your high school transcripts and your affidavit. So you have to send those as like as as, as quick as you can. And when you get, when once you get accepted, send them real quick because uh, that, that that will that will um, those two documents, your high school transcripts and your affidavit, uh, uh, are gonna determine uh, your eligibility for each situation. So you have to send those. Otherwise, you'll be you'll be you'll be charged with out of state tuition. So that's a really important. And of course, the Dream Act application. But um, the deadline for that is actually it's the same deadline as FAFSA, which is March second. So it, so it's 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 a process. So students should really, should kind of should should apply for uh, for universities before the deadline, which is November no yeah November no, October thirtieth. And and then keep it and then just just course then you you want to know what, what you want to apply for so when the when the GMAC opens next year and you you you, you fill out your application you put the same universities you apply for and for in the spring in the GMAC application so they match so the so the state and the universities match because their, their their systems are now linked so so the universities know if you apply for GMAC so they can they can help you financially as well with that in that so that's another thing students may not know. That, uh, that I really would like them to know that uh, just the same universities you're applying for, put put them in in your dream application, and 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 they will, and then they will match the, the systems of both uh, the state system and the university system will match, and they will not. So once you get accepted, and you decide to go to the university, you decide to commit to them, uh, the your information will immediately be sent there.
so they'll have your information and, and they'll that they'll be able to to um to to help you financially. But don't forget the affidavit and the high school transcripts because those are really important because they um they're, they're I mean they're gonna determine your your in situation because otherwise you will be you will if you don't send those you'll be charged out of state and then you won't be able to go or unless you have money. But that's really tough. So so that's one of the, that's one of the things I really wanted to explain. Uh, what's going to say? I mean, there are a lot of things. You know, UCLA has a big resource center. They have a, they also have an ideas group. Other universities such, such as Cal State, Cal Poly Pomona, has a group called the PA. It's student it has a support group for undergraduate students. Uh, I think uh, Cal State LA has its own group. I think it's also called the PA. Um, usually has it for a but as a fraternity. I'm not really sure what the thing is, but they but they're also there in the PA. Uh, Fullerton has a group as well. Cassie Fullerton. I'm not really sure of the name, but it's I know they do. Rihanna College, they I think they, they have a group as well. Citrus College, Sweetas College. Uh, but pretty much most of the most of the Southern California groups, um, I mean uh common communities universities have a have a support group. And I know in Berkeley they have one too. In UC Berkeley they have a really, uh, really good group. It's called Rise, so they have a group that's helping like many students. So there are there are support groups everywhere, and we have you know some uh, some community uh, nonprofit organizations that are helping too, such as Maldev. So so they that the help is there. You know we just we just we just need to let students know that that I had all these groups in these different campuses. That, that that are that are there to you know, support them, that are there to um, help them, if not financially, at least get the resources. So, so they're there and they're and, and they're I mean great people. You know, so are always there helping. They're donating their time and helping students out. So, and I was helped out by a lot of people, by a lot, in in community college throughout my struggle. Because I mean it's not easy, but I mean why one in life is easy, right? So. So I mean, the resources are there. Great people are there. Groups are there. So I think at, at, this, at this point in time, there's really no excuse to say, "Oh, I have no money to go to go to, go to university or to go to school to you know achieve a higher education." Because now we have all those resources, we have all that help. You know, the fair action, which is a little bit aside from the point, but I mean, it also so it is also there. Um, so we have all these resources now. Uh, when I started community college, it was harder because I didn't. I mean, I we only had a dream. I mean, I'm sorry that if I forty, so we only had that. So I had to I had to pay for my for my classes. I had to pay for my for my books, and my parents helped me out. So it was a little bit more of a struggle. And then every year, which is making it harder, is every year the but they cut in education with with budget a budget cuts. They keep affecting education. Of course, it's getting tougher. But uh, but I mean, the help now is there. So I said, so really sad. and and, and it's just a matter of um, of, of taking the right the right help, and and knowing the resources, you know, knowing what the what the AFK forty is, knowing what Dream Act is, knowing what DACA is, and and that's gonna that is gonna help you out a lot because those resources are there for you, as in the community students are there for me as a community student. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would like to talk more about it, but. We don't really have time. Edgar, thank you so much for coming to visit me today. Thank you so much. Uh, we hope you have a, a successful career, and uh, we'll hope to see you soon.